Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yee, 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 yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you. And I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Listen, man, before we get into the meat and potatoes, Hurt sees a hat still in the fact that, you know, the snapbacks, the buckets, It's a movement, everything. LB. Do hats, snapbacks, and buckets. Everything is still in effect. Make sure you check out my merch uh, shop via the print champs. You know what I'm saying? Also, big manscape still in the building. We still manscape strong over here, you know, providing leading cutting edge technology to keep today's man groomed. Also, before she come play on the field, just make sure the grass cut. Hope that don't go over your heads. You'll catch it later. Tap in with Manscaped, man. Save 20% off, use code Brunson, and get free shipping. And a free shipping, I fall for that for y'all. Listen, man, hopefully we are all past. You know, the debacle, the train wreck, the 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 kamikaze that is Ben Simmons. Hopefully we all pass that. Hopefully, you know, we kind of digesting it. But a lot of people want him out of the city. They want him gone. You know what I'm saying? And when you show up like that, hey, we just can't sit back and let it ride, man. So I can't really say that I feel sorry for him. But what I can say is this. This is what's supposed to happen. Now, you know, you ain't got to be brutal, but you're supposed to let a max player play, an all-star player know that, you know what I'm saying, he ain't performing up to the level of standards that the league has set for him and that the fans have set for him. For instance, Paul George gets money. He gets paid a lot of money to play ball. He's an all-star, but they was calling him playoff P. They really can't call him that no more because he ran the way he ran down on the Jazz that game without Kawhi. They can't call him out no more. So you got to play through it. You got to take your lumps. You got to take your bruises. And Ben Simmons is going to have to either get better from this situation or understand that this is the long, the last max contract he's going to be looking at. You know what I mean? He got to get better or, or, you know, after this, it is what it is for Ben, man. I wish him the best. I hope he get better, man. I think he got it in him. He just got to believe in himself. That's what's lacking in that situation. Listen, man, we didn't do a lot of talking about the Philadelphia Eagles and just exactly how bad Jim Schwartz has been in the last three years. Um, you know, a, a lot of the situation with the Eagles got overhyped by the quarterback situation. The last, what, three years in Philadelphia has been a, a controversy. You know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of other stuff got overlooked. So we all thought that it was, you know, the quarterback. Carson Wentz was this, Carson Wentz was that. You know what I mean? But there was also other things on the offense that also didn't help. It didn't help Carson Wentz, didn't help the team. You know what I mean? And you arguably can make a case that dumb things are equally as important to Carson Wentz's play as well. To, you know, making a team, uh, you know, be successful. Offensive line. You know what I'm saying? The lack of how the coach ran the offense. You know what I mean? It was a lot of stuff that put us in bad situations. A lot that the defense couldn't do that other teams in the NFL do almost regularly helped put us in those bad situations. We can't sweep that under the rug as well. The defense was great from the defensive line perspective. Linebacking core was terrible. Corner secondary was terrible. Only one phase of your game was good, and you don't try to add to that phase. That's what I think good coaches need to do. I think good coaches got to start trying to add to your strong phase because it'll only help everything. It'll only help everything. You know what I'm saying? If you got a good phase, like we got a good defense. We don't have a legendary defensive line. I'm sorry, but we got a really good defensive line. What did the legendary defensive lines have? They had defensive coaches that could add to where, where they were extremely strong at. We didn't bring no blitzes. And we and we had the third most blit. We had the third. I'm sorry, we didn't bring any blitzes, and we had the third most sacks in the National Football League. Ridiculous how you don't add on to that and get creative and try to bring more pressure to help an already seemingly top end defensive line be even that much deadlier. That's what I think Jim Schwartz lacked. I think Jonathan Gannon is forward thinking enough to understand this, especially based upon the things that he's saying in some of his interviews. I like it. I love it. But the last three years tell the real story of Jim Schwartz and why he was excused. We give Jim Schwartz a pass last year because we seemingly feel like Jim Schwartz wasn't worse than Doug. And Doug ran the offense, he ran the defense. He's a two-headed monster. A two-headed monster. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that really determines whether you win or lose. He was better than Doug. Period. But he still was one of the worst defensive coordinators in the National Football League as well. Hence why they both were fired. You know, so... Um, the Eagles have had, I'm reading from my notes here. The Eagles have had 10, 11, and 8 interceptions and 17, 20, and 19 takeaways the last three years. 
the last three years, we had 11 or few interceptions. We didn't get more than 11 or more interceptions in a season. And we didn't get more than 20 takeaways in the last three years. That is pathetic. That's pathetic. Both streaks, both streaks of 11 or fewer interceptions and 20 or fewer takeaways are tied for fifth longest in NFL history. Both streaks are top. Teams aren't usually this bad in, two, in those two aspects as defense goes for many years. Three years in a row we've been that bad. That's the fifth longest in NFL history. Fifth longest in NFL history. You know what I mean? And and that's a it's an easy. See, this is why I think Jonathan Gannon will succeed. This is an easy one to overcome. Because just by having the common sense of strategy and game and game you know, and, and just the way you implement your scheme, scheme implementation, you should be able to overcome a stat like that. It just doesn't happen that often. And we're one of the unlucky teams. Fifth longest streak in NFL history in both of those categories. You know what I'm saying? Under 11 interceptions, three years in a row. Under 20 takeaways, three years a well, Three years in a row. An elementary scheme can correct this. Jonathan Gannon is going to come in here. He signed the guys that he liked and the guys that like him, Anthony Harris. He already, up, he already upgraded the safety position. Eric Wilson, linebacker. He already upgraded the linebacker position. And he kept the strong suit together. <laughs> He's already doing the elementary moves that it takes to beat this, uh, to, to break these streaks. Not to mention... Not to mention that he's going to come in and not leave bad cornerbacks on the island. I don't see him doing it. I don't see him doing it. We were one of the worst at giving up the, the, the deep ball. We had 15 plays or 40 yards or more passing on us. Gannon could run a faithful 3-4 and mix in some blitz packages, and he will be way better than Jim Schwartz. I'm sorry, a cover three. He could play a faithful cover three. And get freaky with the blitz, pause. And he could be way better than Jim Schwartz. Easy. Easy. We had six interceptions last year, y'all. We were bad. And what universe, think about it like this. And what universe would a logical thinking defensive coordinator know that he's third in sacks, third in QB pressures, with only rushing four? And still be last, amongst the last in the NFL, at blitz percentage. If he would have sent the linebacker every now and then and had teams afraid of a potential blitz, we probably would have won a division. That's how bad the division was, and that's how bad our records were. That's how, and that's how close it was. That if this, it's the simple adjustments. That's why you got to get people in the building who can make the simple adjustments when you have a good football team. And he was able to do that in 2017, make the simple adjustments while playing with a good football team. These guys cannot make the simple adjustments with poor personnel. They don't know who to put in the right spots. And that is why I think that Jonathan Gannon will succeed because he has all the small things. Now, I'm not saying he's a mastermind yet, but he got the small things down pat. It's not going to be hard to overcome this, ladies and gentlemen. The only way, the bar is set so low for Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni can win six, six games. He's not going to like it, but it ain't four. You know what I'm saying? It ain't four games. He got better technically. But nobody don't want no six win season. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm just, just kicking it around a little bit. So we gotta really, we gotta really diagnose these guys, and we gotta really understand, understand that these guys really don't have a tall order. Maybe our expectations of what the team should be doing is just too high. Cause I expect a division. I expect success. Let me know what you think in the comments.